Good evening, and thank you for watching Transform by Truth. It is wonderful to have you join our program here this evening. I'd like to begin tonight's program with um, sharing a story from the Gospel of Matthew. Um, the Gospel of Matthew records a story about a young man who came to Jesus one day and asked a very sincere question. He came to Jesus and he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, if you read the story and you get a little bit of the background behind this young man, you will come to find out that he was a religious person. Uh, it indicates that he had been raised in religion from the time of his birth. He was very dedicated to it. He kept the laws that were given. And I would say from my own personal evaluation in reading this, that this young man was a seeker of truth, that he really wanted answers for the spiritual questions that weighed heavy upon his heart and constantly went on in his mind. And so he went to Jesus, and of course at this time Jesus was very popular uh, throughout the land of Israel, and he asked him, what good thing must I do to inherit eternal life? Now the answer that Jesus gave him was uh, very, very specific, uh, but maybe not in the way that we would think that uh, God would answer such a question. He actually went through and he talked to him about the law and asked him if he had kept the law. And this young man had said, well, yes, I've obeyed my parents. I've not killed anybody. I'm not involved in stealing and lying and the rest of the things. And so he was looking at it from this perspective. He said, what is the good thing I need to do? What is it that needs to take place in my life if I will be able to go to heaven one day? And so Jesus was dealing with a matter of great importance. And sadly, this young man heard the answer of truth. Jesus gave it to him very clearly as to how someone can be saved. But instead of receiving that truth, he walked away from it. And the Bible says that he walked away very sorrowful. I find that today there are many people that are seeking after truth. They want answers to their spiritual questions, the things that they wrestle with in their heart, they're looking for a solution to. Now, there are some people that have not heard the truth of God's word. They've heard religion's answers, they've heard man's answers, they've heard what people think about certain things, but they've not really heard what the word of God has said. And yet there are others who have heard the word of God, but yet they've rejected it. They've said, that's not what I want. That's not what I'll believe. And how sad it is to see them to walk away from truth. Now, tonight on this program, we're going to have a special guest come and share his story of how he sought for truth. And as I've heard his testimony already, I find it very similar to that story in the Gospel of Matthew, that he was searching for truth and he was looking in every single direction. And there was a time where he just abandoned it, gave it up for a while, but then ultimately came to find that truth. And I want you to hear how that truth has set him free. And so listen carefully as his story is shared, and I hope that it will be an encouragement to you tonight. And so why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your story in the pursuit of truth. Uh, thank you, Pastor Jeremiah, and uh, greetings to all your viewers who are watching uh, my TV this uh, tonight. Uh, my name is uh, Lendua Aquila. I'm from the island of Matuku in Lao, and uh, I go to Nosori Baptist Church. Now I am also teaching in uh, Nosori Baptist Christian Academy, uh, teaching Form 3s and Form 4s. Um, tonight I would like to tell you the story about my search for the truth. I grew up in the islands and uh, just like a normal Fijian young boy, um, my dad, my mom, and my mom goes to church every Sunday, and uh, my dad hardly goes to church unless there is a special gathering. So growing up in uh, that kind of setting, 
I, we take church seriously. And uh, <clears throat> we know that uh, uh, one day we will die and it's either we go to hell or we go to heaven. And uh, as I grow up uh, around 10 years old, uh, my mom, I saw my mom got baptized into the Pentecostal church. So a couple of uh, months later, I joined, uh, being baptized in the name of Jesus, thinking that that was the truth that was that uh, will take me to heaven. Uh, so from 10 years old and growing up, becoming a teenager, I started to read the Bible and uh, I started asking myself questions as to, is this really what God wants me to do? Is this really a God's plan for my life? I have that inner desire to be used of the Lord and uh, that's why I started searching for the truth. I begin, I begin asking questions like, uh, what is the truth? Um, who is right? Because as I grew up and I started walk, going around and I realized uh, there are so many churches out there. There are so many religions. So the questions I started asking, which one is right? Which church is the righteous? Because there has to be something right. Because I remember the Lord Jesus Christ started one church and he said that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So I believe in my heart that there is a church where I should go to and that will teach me the truth of the Bible. So I started my search. I, I, I went into other churches. I listened to the doctrines that have been preached in those churches, not knowing what is the truth. Everything that, that is being preached is based on the Bible. And uh, somehow, as I continued to grow after I left high school, um, I started to get confused because everywhere I go, it's all the same. I'll go here, they say, well, this is the truth. And I'll go somewhere else and they say, this is the truth. And everywhere we go, they have their own form of truth or their own way of salvation. And somehow it confused me and all my questions, everything that I was searching for, I just couldn't find what the truth is. <clears throat> as, uh, as I get confused, my confusion led me and around 2001, I started, uh, I left home. I didn't want to go to church. Um, I wasn't uh, really into church. I don't think that it matters anymore. So I left home, I went, I started living in the streets, started roaming the streets of Suva, and uh, I found it very interesting. I found uh, that life very interesting and uh, I enjoyed it very much. I have all the freedom that I want. I get as many friends as I want, whatever I want, whatever I need, I get it. I thought that that was life. I thought, and then I thought, I, I started thinking, what's the use of going to church when here I get everything I need? You know, even when my parents come around, they need money. I give them money when they want something to be bought, when there is a family function or anything. I help them. I supported them. So I thought that that was life. That was okay. But somehow, somewhere deep within me, there's this thought that one day I will die. I know if you'll believe this, but there are times when I'm in, in nightclubs and this thought just came to me. What if Jesus comes now? What will happen to you? I ran out crying. Sometimes I'll go sit at the seawall thinking, Lord, where am I going? Who will answer my search? Who will give me the solutions or the answers to the questions that I have? Please. I started asking the Lord. And then after a while, I meet my friends and all this uh, conviction goes away. And uh, I just kind of like, uh, well, maybe it's just something that's at the back of my mind. But I'm glad that the Bible also says that you train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. So roaming the streets so for almost seven years, around 2006, uh, some of my friends went into a, a mission 
called the City of Refuge, a mission run by Noxori Baptist Church. So when they went there, they came and invited me. They said, hey, this is great. It's different. I said, no, they are all the same. I told them, I have experienced it. I have seen it. I said, I told them, do you see when we go and have breakfast with the pastor so-and-so? They always take down our names. Why? When we are only a few of us, what do they say? Make sure you bring some more friends. They're just doing it for their own gains. So that one, that city of refuge thing is also the same. For one month, they kept on persuading me day in and day out until I gave up. Okay, I'll just go up with you today. But after today, I will not go back up there and stop pestering me with your, uh, with uh, all those things that you're saying. It's good. It's great. That man is uh, everything that you need. You can train and all. Because I know, I always thought that they are all the same. They are just using us. We are just like pawns just being used for them to get something. But then when I went up, I realized it was really different. I came to realize the hospitality was different. We were all treated the same. No, there were no favorites. Before we had dinner, one thing that they failed to tell me is that before we having dinner, we'll have devotion first. But it was during those devotions that I started to realize that God still loves me. He still cares for me. And I wanted to, I wanted to dig into, dig into that, but I was afraid. There was no one to guide me. There was no one to help me. So all this searching and all this uh, uh, desire that I had brought me to where I am today. Now I am in, uh, no sorry. So my search took me straight to No Sorry Baptist Church. Now, through all these years of searching and looking for the truth, you've said that uh, you bounced from one place to another. Seven years, you just gave up on church completely. And now you're at Nasori. Did you find the answer that you're looking for? Have you found what you've been searching for all these years going way back to your youth? Yes, Pastor. Can you share with us how you found that? Well, it's amazing how the Lord works. And he, we know He works in mysterious ways. And uh, every now and then, when it comes to June 1st, I always remember. I never forget the day. It wasn't because of a great sermon. It wasn't because of a great preacher that came to preach the day. It was on Sunday afternoon, as we were sitting in church, one of the pastors, one of the Baptist pastors from Nauru, sent over a videotape of how prisoners back in Nauru were getting converted because of the gospel. As, was, as I was watching that, I realized that it was something else. I've been there for two months. We left uh, uh, Suva in uh, 2008, on April 1st, I reached, uh, on April 1st, we were in Nosori, and uh, after April, month of April, I have been going to church every Sunday and attending Sunday school and all this. It was feeling great to be back on the track again, but I realized that my, uh, my questions were not re really answered. And then, on June 1st, 2008, that afternoon, as we were listening to all those prisoners, big, tough-looking prisoners, talking about how they have come to know the Lord, and they are glad at that moment that they are 100% sure that they will have, that they have eternal life. It struck me because all those years, almost 19 years of my life, that was something that I was looking for. That was what I was searching for. What will I do to have eternal life? And it's amazing. That day I got convicted that I am a sinner. As in Romans chapter 3, in verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
I came to realize that I was a sinner who was heading to hell. There's nothing that I can do to save myself from sin. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6 verse 23, For the wages of sin is death. I used to think that because I'm a righteous person, it would, it would save me. That I would be able, if I live, live right, if I do good and be being righteous, it will also save me. But it didn't. I came to know, came to realize that in Isaiah chapter 64, in verse 6, the Bible says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. It clearly tells me that my righteousness is nothing. It will not take me anywhere because I am not saved. Because I have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And also I came to realize that I have a hope. My hope is in a Savior. A Savior that has risen. That came to earth, that was born through God's love. As we all know, a well-known verse in John chapter 3. Verse 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. God gave him to come and die for my sin. I came to realize that. I came to realize that I don't have to do anything else for me to save myself from going to hell. Because the answer is all there. It's in the Bible. I don't have to go and read some books written by somebody else. I don't have to go and listen to someone else. Or go through the, the media, the internet, and look for answers. It's all in the Bible. And it's amazing how many, how many of, uh, how people try and, uh, look for answers in the media, in the internet. And also, one important thing that I found is that salvation is by grace alone. If you turn your Bible, if you have a Bible with you and turn it to Ephesians chapter 2, In verse 8 and verse 9, the Bible says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. We are saved. Eternal life is a gift that is given by God to us. All we have to do is receive it. When you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and receive Him as your personal Savior, you're receiving the gift of eternal life. In Acts Chapter 15, in verse 11, the Bible says, But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So after coming to know all these verses, I come to realize how lost I am as I read these verses. I came to realize that I have a Savior who loves me. John 3, 16 tells us that. I came to know that He came to die for my sins. As in Luke chapter 19. In verse 10 the Bible says. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Not only did I know that the Bible says that God loves me. In, first, in Romans chapter 5 verse 8. He showed me that, that love. The love is not just a feeling that you feel towards someone. The love is an action that you have to do. You have to do it to show that you love someone. So after coming to know all these truths, I came to realize how lost I was. I came to realize that all those search that I was doing was vain because I kept on going to the wrong people. I kept on going to, uh, to the wrong things to find the answers, to find the solutions to my problems and to answer my questions. Then I came to realize that all I need to do to humble myself, repent of all my sins and receive the Lord Jesus Christ. As my Lord and my Savior. So that day, I told myself, no matter what I will face, no matter what I will go through, I care as what people will say about me. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. I humble myself. I couldn't stop the tears. I cried that day, 
knowing that I'm saved. And after one of the brethren led me to the Lord, I opened my eyes and realized that I have received the gift of eternal life. That is how I came to know, came to find the answer for my search for the truth. What a, what a wonderful testimony, and we praise God for that. You know, every person has a story uh, to tell. We all have a history. We all have a life that we've lived. And I, I personally believe that everybody is searching for something. Some people know what they're searching for. Others, they know that there's something missing in their life. They can't necessar necessarily figure it out right now or put their finger on it but they know that there's a void. And that void can only be filled by a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we've heard, not just from a story in the Bible, but from even this testimony here of two men that were searching for truth, searching for the answer. How do I inherit eternal life? How do I know that when this life ends that I'll live eternally with God and not face the judgment of hell and the separation from God? And the answer is always found in the scriptures. See, the man in Matthew, he went to Jesus. Jesus is the word of God. He asked him that question and he got the Bible answer. He got the answer from God. Sadly, he walked away and rejected that message. The brother that you've heard from tonight, he had a long search, but if you listen very carefully to his testimony, he said it was not what churches said, not what preachers said, not what people thought. What really gave him confidence and gave him assurance was that he heard what the Bible said. And the Bible is very clear when it comes to the matter of salvation. It's not complicated. It's not something you have to go to a school for four to five years to figure out. I mean, what's complicated about this? That God loves you, that he sent his son to die for you. His son died on the cross for your sin, was buried, rose again. And all that we need to do is receive that message, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and allow him to save our soul. And that's what the Bible declares over and over and over again. And I hope that if you're watching tonight, and you're still on that pursuit of truth. I hope the word of God is giving you clarity and through this testimony that it's encouraging you to go to the scriptures, not go to religion, not go to preachers, not go to men or ideas, but go to the word of God. And so in our final moments here, um, let me just give you the opportunity to speak to our viewers once again and uh, maybe offer a challenge or at least an encouragement because it's hard to know where people are today. And a lot of people I believe personally are seeking, but they're not uh, willing to admit that. But would you speak to them and just give them a challenge tonight uh, from your own personal search for truth? Uh, thank you once again, Pastor Jeremiah. Uh, to all of you viewers who are watching tonight, uh, I just want to encourage you that the truth is out there. All you have to do is continue to search for it because it is God's intention that the whole world will be saved. Uh, don't worry about what people will say because in every good thing that we do, there's always someone who will try to drag us down. And that someone is not far away from us. Sometimes he'll, he'll use doubts. Sometimes he'll use your past. Sometimes he'll use your friends. Sometimes he'll use people who are close to you, that you care about, to distract you, to drag you down. Because he does not want you to have eternal life. He wants you to go with him. The victory has already been won in the mount, on Mount Calvary. When Jesus died, after three days, he rose again victoriously. And the devil knows that. He knows that he has already lost. He knows that his destiny has already been finalized. He knows where he is going. But you and I, as we continue to search for the truth, 
we don't need to go anywhere else. Anywhere, anywhere else. All we need to do, look into the Bible. Ask God to give us the wisdom. Ask God to give us the knowledge. Ask God to give us the understanding. To help us to find the truth that we're searching for. I'm glad that about 12 years ago, I came to find and I came to know the truth. And life has never been better. Not because... I'm a school teacher now, not because I have a family, but because I realized that at the end of the day, when I leave this world, I will go and spend the rest of eternity with my father. Thank you, Pastor. Well, I certainly appreciate you coming on the program tonight and, and not just sharing your story, but sharing your heart with us. I know that... Uh, you know, when you think about all that God has done for you, it's hard not to get emotional inside. And that just comes from the gratitude of knowing that that God has uh, saved our soul, that he has given us promises, that uh, as we walk with him, he cleans up our life. Uh, he takes us off of the streets of sin and he puts us on a path that is more productive, more profitable, has meaning and purpose, and that just cleans us up from all the things that bring that guilt, that shame, uh, just that dirtiness that comes within our mind and within our heart. And again, that's what Jesus Christ can do for you. Uh, I, I, I love hearing these stories of how God has changed lives. But the one story I love the most is the story of a Savior coming from heaven, going to the cross and dying for me, and then having the power to raise himself from the dead so that he could give me life, he could give me salvation, that he could be a part of my day-to-day -day activities, that friend that would stick closer than a brother. And that's who the God of the Bible is. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you have questions in your heart, if you're confused over something or there's a, a, a nagging within saying, I need to know this, then please, please contact our ministry. You can contact me personally. If you live in the Nasori area or would like to drive out there, uh, you're welcome to go there, speak to this brother, speak to others there. And I promise you this, we will take the word of God, open up this book and show you exactly what God has said. Not what we feel, not what we think, not what our religion may hold to or believe, but what the Word of God says to you. Because it is the Word of God that will set you free, and it is the Word of God that will transform your life. And so I thank you for taking the time to watch tonight's program. I hope it's been an encouragement, a challenge, and a blessing to you. And I'd like to thank you again for being on our program. It's so wonderful to have you. May the Lord continue to bless you as uh, you serve him there at Nasori Baptist Church.